with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. And I'm asking that all of us, uh, during our moment of silence, uh, keep the Carlos, I'm going to say it wrong, Ordo, 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 uh, that family in, in our prayers, as well as uh, Devon Gibbons and his family, um, and uh, Jana and her family at this time. So uh, if you would please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you all. You may be seated. Well, Jen, I'm going to um, let you talk about the uh, successful performance with tri since I was out of town. Yeah. So, I, Megan, if you want to share, if you want to come up and share and introduce your um, actors and actresses. And okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, my name is Megan Allen, and I am the choir and drama teacher at the high school. Um, I co directed the show The Murder Mystery at the Murder Mystery um, with Brenda Christman. Not Christman, I know her as Brenda Christman. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Brenda McLean. And, um, the Murder Mystery at the Murder Mystery was a different kind of show because the kids were on the eve of a production that they were putting on, um, putting a little English on it, and so they had to have British accents for part of the show, bad British accents, <laughs> and then um, they had to flip their character and be a normal sounding person. And they had to do this multiple times, so it was kind of like Groundhog Day. Um, so they would have to constantly go back and forth between the British accent and the regular accent. Um, I call Alex Porterfield Taco because in his character, um, at, he kept asking, can I go to the taco truck? I need, is it a taco break? I'm hungry. So why don't you show them what you particularly did almost the entire show? Can you show them on the ground what you did almost the entire show? <laughs> and he had to stay awake for it. <laughs> so, um, the kids, um, there would be a blackout and somebody would die from a fire poker. So we would have to have them lie flat and have a fire poker sticking out of under their arms and they had to stay still the whole time. So, um, Jesse, um, Smith is the person that was the playwright. So he came in a little bit later on in the show and he kind of had to have an alter ego. So he, the first part, he was nice. Yes. And kind of wondering what are all these crazy people on the ground for? I didn't write them in the show. But then um, when he came back again, um, he had to be kind of an alter ego and be kind of whimsical, but kind of mean. And um, can you show them your slow motion scene? Like how you uh, had to walk? How did you have to okay, walk in absolutely. between people? How I have to walk in between people? Well, I would start over here. I would snap, like so. And then, and he, would, like their and arms like are this. sticking out and he would have to go through. And this <laughs> showing Brenda and I's age, the second that I saw this, I said, we have to do chariots of fire in the background. <laughs> and of course, the kids had no idea what I was talking about. Exactly. I did. So I most did. of them were like, what is that? And I said, your parents and grandparents are going to get it slow motion and it's chariots of fire. <laughs> so that's what we did. Um, Great gag. We had a successful run. Um, I believe the first night we had over 130 some people. Second night, it was um, a little bit more than that. So it was a success. I mean, we're very proud of the kids and we would like to thank everyone for their support. And I can't tell you what the musical is yet because it's a surprise, but that will be coming um, with some trivia leading up to revealing it, so. 
Congratulations to all of you. I know how hard your job is, oh my goodness, and I know how hard you have to work to get your parts right and make sure you're on cue and such, but uh, congratulations. Sounds like it was a great event. Thank you. Yes, Thank, you. Thank you all. You guys are welcome to stay for the rest of the board meeting, but I'm sure you have pressing things to do, like homework, or, or, you, or your rides here, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> At this point, we need to recess the regular board meeting. Do we have to vote on that? Or I just announce it? All right, we don't do that stuff. Okay. And now we will open the public hearing on the lease. Um, these documents were posted online, and this is for public comment. So uh, at this time, we will open the floor to any comments from any member of the community. Don't all speak at once. It makes it hard to hear. <laughs> Anyone else? Being that there are no patrons here who wish to comment on this, um, I think we could go ahead and uh, uh, follow along with the action item, and that is to adopt the projected resolution. Wait, I'm on the wrong page. Sorry. Yeah. I am. Scott, do you have Zoom pulled up on your computer? I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anybody was online saying. that... There is not. Okay, thank you. Okay, there is no public hearing, so we'll move on to adopting the um, project resolution, which was also posted online. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. Yep. No, you're right. And here's the resolution. Got it. No, I'm done. Okay. No, you're you're correct. Okay, these resolutions have been uh, printed online and. Um, available to the community and to any one of you who likes to dig deep into the bowels of the agenda. You can um, find these uh, at your leisure, but if you have any questions or concerns, um, otherwise we uh, are not required to read them. Anybody who's dying to hear them. So we will skip that little process, and the first one is uh, the project resolution and it's the whereas is and the what for that we're resolved that an estimate on hand of soft costs for the project are $5,793,950. And uh, we also have a, a lease rental in there for $311,050, resulting in $6,105,000. So $105,000, excuse me. Any questions? We will, uh, I will entertain a motion that we approve this resolution as presented. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. I'll second. Thank you, Stephen. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Part B, adopt a resolution authorizing execution of the lease. We just made it, now we're going to shoot it. Okay, no, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, again, the whereases and wherefores are all available for public reading and uh, visiting. Um, if anyone is so inclined, uh, are there any questions or concerns? We are authorizing the execution of the lease and sale of real estate. Any questions or concerns? And that's where we made the merger with the two two parcels, is that correct, Jan? With the No, no. that's not what this would be for. Okay. This is this. this is just the lease agreement, which um, Oh that we're gonna lease some property. Correct. Yes. Got Levies it. the required property tax. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions other than me? All right, um, I will entertain a motion that we uh, approve the second resolution. 
So Resolution moved. B. I'm sorry? So moved. Tomorrow? Uh, second. Thank you, Ethan. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Resolution C, resolution assigning construction bids and contracts once received. We're going to get a project done, we're going to have somebody do it. So, uh, we will be able to open that, or begin to uh, open that for bidding. Correct. So, um, the plan in regards to this is to have Terry Thornsbury come to our next study session and show you uh, where we are in the plans and the design process and answer any questions that you might have at that time. Um, after that, he anticipates sending these out to bid um, sometime in December. We have to publicly um, post those and let contractors know. And then I will be sure to include you on communication in regards to the opening of those bids. Those are public openings. They happen here in this room. And then even at that point in time, it doesn't mean that it's a done deal. We will bring those bids back to the board, um, share with you what all of the bids were, why we elected to, or why we're recommending the, the bid that we are recommending. So we will continue to keep you looped throughout that process. This is just to allow us to continue to engage in that process um, and get the ball rolling and bring it back to you. Questions, comments? So to follow up on what you just said, um, I was initially gonna ask Lauren about that very last sentence, that the bids and contracts related to the project are handed over to the building corporation. So that means therefore they're the ones that are overseeing the project. Is that, is that, am I reading that correctly? The bond proceeds are held by a bank to be doled out to the contractors. Terry Thornsbury is technically the project manager overseeing the actual day-to-day -day construction and progress. But then the, the bids and the contracts, if I'm reading this right, says that the building corporations are the ones that are, even though they're going to stay in contact with, the, with us, they're the ones that are making the decisions, correct? The Right, the bids are submitted to the building corporation. Right, yeah. But then it has to come to us before it gets finalized. Correct, Correct. as a school board. Okay. 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 And Stephen, I appreciate you asking questions. I think in the nine years that I've been in the seat, this is maybe the second time that we've gone through the entire process. So there, it, it can get very tedious, as April and Lauren will share. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Amber said everything's been fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, <I'll talk> to <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from any member of our of our assembled group? If not, we'll entertain a motion that we uh, approve the resolution assigning construction bids and contracts once received. So moved. Thank you, Ethan. Second. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. And the fourth one, adopt a resolution approving amendment, first amendment to the master disclosure. That is so redundant, I'm not even sure what it means. <laughs> Can you explain that? Yeah, so the Securities and Exchange Commission requires that a school corporation enter into a first amendment to the master continuing disclosure. Um, before it issues bonds, the school corporation has previously entered into this type of agreement. It requires that the school corporation agree to timely provide certain financial information to the SEC's EMMA database and provide notice of any material events. All right. Claire's my, no, I got it. I understood. <laughs> the SEC just needs some cream. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So again, this has been made available and uh, has to do with stay legal as we go through the bond process. So are there any questions or concerns about that? And no, any comments from the gallery? I will entertain a motion at this time. So Stephen. Moved. Second. Thank you. Stephen and Jenny, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you all. We move on to adjourn the public hearing on the lease. I'm going to say, okay, we're going to do that. All right. And then we open a public hearing for our CTA agreement and contract terms.
Jen, anything you want to say about that? Well, I know that Jim Keller and Hope Shally are here. I don't know if you want to share any comments at this time or. So again, this is a public hearing and we are open for public comments and discussion regarding the, uh, the newly ratified uh, contract for the 23-24 school year. Before we move forward, I would like to thank uh, Katie and Lauren and um, Cassie Murphy did a wonderful job, Kathy Adams was a tremendous asset in the office continuing to run numbers. I want to thank Jen and Hope. There were there was a lot of communication um, at the table. There was communication between buildings, through emails, through text messages. Um, I think it was Hope that shared last time. It was the first for uh, Jen to lead the group. It was first for your representative to be here. It was first for Kathy to run uh, data. We didn't, Todd has been in and out of the office area so i just want to thank you for that continued collaboration the communication the integrity and honesty going back and forth it's a vital vital part of this and it's what makes this district work so thank you i don't think anybody appreciates the time that is spent on it until you live in the role and sit at the table and understand that it doesn't just happen so thank you and Megan, I know you were at the table too, so thank you for your support in that as well. Anything from the public? There are no, uh, no comments from the community, then um, we need to uh, vote on uh, approving the adoption of the RC, RTCA agreement and the contract terms for 23-24 school year. Anybody like to make a motion? So moved. Jenny? Second. <clears throat> Mark. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. We now adjourn the public hearing on the contract and resume the regular board meeting. But first we'll, we'll pause for station identification. I don't know why I felt like I needed to do that. Okay, that that dates some of us, but that's okay. Uh, resuming the regular board meeting. First, we'll uh, take a look at approval of the minutes from October 23rd, 2023. Um, we have about four of those here. Also, approval of the minutes from November 7th, 2023, regular meeting. Um, approval of the November 20th, 2023, uh, trustees regular meeting and approval of the minutes from the November 13th, 2023 public hearing. Did y'all read through those? Jenny, you are usually the one to do it with a fine tooth comb. Anything to? Um, Amber and I chatted. It was just on the study session, making sure that the people in attendance at the top and those are listed. Um, she went, she said she's already done it. As this meeting has started, it's made sure um, all of our admin team were listed. They were listed in the body, but not in the body. So okay. That's all that. It's just a technical correction. Yes. yes. All right. Any questions on any of those other, other than that? Thank you, Jenny, for taking care of that. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. It is an important part. There are times that we have to go back and access those, and it is yeah. nice to have those and make sure they're accurate. So I appreciate that, the communication. If there's no further discussion, I will entertain a motion that we approve uh, the minutes of those four meetings as uh, presented. With the corrections, right? With corrections. With corrections. So moved. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. Second. And Jenny. All right. Moving on, uh, we have the. Huh? Oh, yeah, we, we still need to vote. I can't just want to be done on that. Okay, all those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. I actually write down on some of these. Vote. We have to vote. Okay. Um, moving on, we have the uh, financial report, and uh, we all get a copy of that. And at this point, the education fund is at 
$658,490.85. Debt service is $1,577,579.93. And the operations fund is $1,200,000. Or two thousand five hundred seventy nine dollars and forty cents. Uh, Did I get them wrong? Yeah, I have the education fund as nine hundred and forty five thousand eight hundred and five dollars and sixty seven cents. Yeah. I looked at the wrong column. Appropriations, I think, is what you were reading. Okay, what, what was it? Um, nine. In the graph, it's nine low. million four hundred. $945,805.67. Well, thank you. I did. I just copied off the wrong line there. Are, the offer, excuse me. Are, are we just, aren't we just doing September? Since that's what our... Well, usually we should do... Oct it, they filled it in for October, but the year-over-year -year analysis is September, but I'm okay. assuming that's because of the... Um, absences in the department. Yeah, and and also on the operations fund, um, we have not asked to transfer, but in that, and Amber, I may uh, rely on you to help as well. We found in communications where not all of the invoices had been submitted to insurance in regards, and there's about three hundred and some thousand dollars, almost four hundred thousand. So Denise and Amber spent maybe three entire days communicating with the insurance to make sure all of the paper trail was submitted. Um, Todd, in his absence, had communicated, had opened up the claim, had started the process, but Denise and Amber carried that to the finish line last week. So that is, that is part of this. Um, the other part of this is we've not um, sought our ESSER reimbursement. Denise is working on understanding how to get those funds back and Todd communicated today. So those are in there. So um, looking at this, I'm not um, as overly concerned with operations as I was this summer when we did this. Um, and part of this is, and I appreciate the board's support and you're welcome to ask Amber questions as well, is um, getting caught up in some of the things, uh, especially reimbursements, that Todd had started the process on in good faith, but just wasn't able to complete those. And we didn't understand completely where he was in the process until we started the deeper dive in the communications, and of course he has that felt well. So I, I am not as concerned about this fund report as I was in the summer. Um, obviously something to watch and, and to monitor and to understand, but working with Denise and with Amber and their hard work, um, I see this rectifying itself rather quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, the next item on the uh, claims and payroll, or excuse me, on this financial report is the approval of claims totaling $843, 800 $43,493.53. Um, we also have approval of payroll for November 3rd and November 17th, totaling $920,405.71. Any questions? At this point, I would entertain a motion that we uh, approve all the all of the financial report claims and payroll. So moved. And Stephen second? I'll second. Yeah. You gotta talk, honey. You're, was, you can wave waiting. at me all day, but it doesn't count for you. I was waiting something. for you to Acknowledge. finish your turn. <laughs> okay. So we have Jenny and Stephen again. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Approval of the final reading of bylaw 0164.50. And this would be the final one, which means we need to vote. So any questions on that? <coughs> Do you need to share, Jana? I don't believe so. Okay. Unless there are questions or concerns. All right. At this time, um, I would accept uh, motion that we uh, move forward with uh, a vote. So moved. Thank you, Mark. I would second. 
Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Six to zero. And approval of district employee raises and pipeline. <clears throat> So as we enter into this, um, Kathy Adams spent a great deal of time running different scenarios, um, understanding that we are in a position now where um, it's necessary to keep up with um, even fast food restaurants and, and the concern in that area. So starting the baseline at $14 and then making those incremental um, jumps um, will allow for allow for us, I think, to be competitive with local businesses and to draw in those employees that we desperately need, especially in uh, the area of maintenance and um, IAs. Um, did look at increasing the substitute pay, um, which brings us, I think, closer in alignment with what other districts are doing. Um, I do have an overall estimated cost to um, the entire, well, I, I broke it down by all of the um, proposed increases. I think I also have it just by, oh, I have it broken down by different um, departments. If you'd like for me to read through the cost increases by, by department. I would be interested in okay. that. Okay. Um, right now for and this is just the impact of the pipeline races, not of any of the other. Right, there's, I've got the totals as well for all, if, we, if you're interested in All, those. including admin and teacher, mm -hmm. and the CBA as well? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> the overall increase to all, to all pipelines, to all um, recommendations, $477,413 to education fund, knowing that 327,000 of that is new monies coming in with the ADM enrollment. Um, and then to um, operations, a little over 130,000. And did speak extensively to the team and with Denise in regards to a plan to um, provide appropriations by building level to help them help us in regards to that. And the team can share out if they'd like to help with well then, I, if you, since you had those overall, that was what was most important to me. Obviously, if other board members want the specifics by department, then go for it. But that was what I was interested in. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Any questions on approval of the district uh, employee raises and pipeline? I think I just have a, just a couple small ones, and it's probably just because I don't know all the technicals of the job descriptions. But some of them on here, like, Technician versus head technician. Is there like what's the since head technicians being paid less on the pipeline? I didn't know what that was about. <laughs> oh, she should have flipped those. Are those backwards? Okay. They are. Okay, that makes That's more sense that to me. That's something we talked about in regards to that. I apologize. This and then further good. down, I didn't know this one's definitely just that I don't know what the technical job descriptions differences are. But all the other underwear, special needs IA, intense needs IA, the Title I IA, um, a lot of those are on the same. And then special needs has a weird spike in the middle, even though they're roughly the same in that first chunk. And it's a pretty substantial jump. Um, and so I didn't know if that, like, to me, when I read it, again, this is, again, a job description thing. Intense needs seems like if one of those categories was going to be higher. Intense sounds like it would higher, but it's probably just because I don't know what Jim, they mean you, by special needs. Can I you go that. through the differentials? Yeah, I'm trying to pull it up here. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't misunderstanding something. Are you at the was... bottom of page one? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So intense needs IA is someone that works with severe behaviors or in our developmental preschool or in our life skills classroom. Okay. Um, special needs IA are all the rest. Okay. For special ed. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Was that, there were just those two, right? Right, yeah, right. Title one is for obviously Title one. Because <laughs> that was a different fund. So then I guess just over the
the intense needs, what's the like 70 cent difference for special needs? I don't know that I have an answer for you. I'll have to okay. dig deeper. I don't know if those <clears throat> need to be flipped. I know we built this off of our last pipeline. Is there no one that's currently in there that would that falls like are there no employees that fall in that for the intense needs and maybe that's why it wasn't oh, so it's all just adjusted. I thought it would have been similarly experience. And that's what each column <coughs> over gives. I, I understand. We just, well, we just went down to one um, category for everybody. Oh, you did? Yes. So we wouldn't be using that line item? Correct. Do you want to share that? That, that explains it. So we just went, instead of trying to differentiate between the two, because obviously all their jobs are hard, right. um, we just went to one so everybody's getting the same. So I'm not sure which line it is. But okay. So intense needs may not have been adjusted hardly at all anymore. Thank you, Jen. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that helps a lot. I just seen a couple spots, and I, yep. I didn't good know question. it was just the job description thing. Nope. Thank you. Numbers. Okay. Any other questions on approval of district employee uh, raises and pipeline? I will accept the motion that we can move on that. I'll move. Stephen? Second. Jenny? All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. Can you guys sorry, sorry. <coughs> making that motion with the amendments that you discussed? Oh, or we should do that. Hmm. Can we back up? Amendment to the motion? <laughs> we need to make an amendment to that motion. <laughs> that motion, not a motion. Well, and I can we further clarify that this will go into effect tomorrow morning once the board approves it. The only control <coughs> would be with the contracts for teachers and the possibility of the administrative contracts. But this would go into, into effect starting tomorrow's hourly wages. So this so classified have, pipeline, effective as of November 21st, with the adjustments, including uh, cleaning, cleaning up that special needs, intense IA, and the head technician. Yep. technician. Yep. Thank you. That's my motion. There. Thank you. <laughs> we have a second to Jenny. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero again. Okay. And uh, moving on. Approval of transportation recommendations for increases in training and maintenance, hourly pay, ECA field trip pay. So Kevin shared this with me and he's been so patient. Kevin may call on you to answer some questions, but this was his proposal in July. I think Kevin, you met with the transportation with the drivers and, and this was what they were requesting and able to, um, this was prior to Todd's absence, was able to work with him um, in regards to this and the overall impact to the operations fund and with the help of the administrative team and the department heads, I don't believe we're going to have any concerns in regards to answering this request from Kevin. So this was also included in the operations fund number Correct. that you gave us Correct. a few minutes ago. The only thing I excluded would have been uh, Wendy's department with food service and that's an independent because that's a whole other thing. Exactly. But I can tell you the overall effect of that as well. No, no. both well. Okay. The operations fund. So yes, that was in my overall figure. Any other questions regarding the uh, transportation recommendations from Kevin and Jana? At this time, I'll entertain a motion. And again, these would go into effect tomorrow. So moved. Thank you, Ethan. Second. Thank you, Mark. All those in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries <coughs> six to zero. Approval of the contract employee salary proposal to Mrs. Vance. So these would, most of these are contracted employees, um, speech and language pathologists. They have been pulled from the collective bargaining unit, but um, 
would like to match those what we're paying teachers in regards to years of experience and then the bump over to the masters because each of the speech and language pathologists would carry a master's degree. Um, department heads a $3,200 increase and those have been figured in. I met with Lisa McMillan and we shared some different scenarios in regards to money and what I felt limitations were in the operation fund and what we came up with was um, amazingly both what we had on pieces of paper to share and so I uh, would propose that Lisa McMillan be our auditorium manager at $25 per hour and she would continue to keep um, the time card for that that would disseminate her hours there tracking that to make sure that we are also being fair to the community in regards to those who rent out the facility, those types of things. Using the current formula that um, was verbally agreed upon, and I spoke with the administrative team, these would be the current uh, numbers for the administrative team. Knowing that moving forward, if um, the top end of the scale, so the, the formula that was built for the administrative team um, was that we would take the highest paid teachers work day and then multiply that out towards uh, the number of days that administrators work. There was also um, a line item for um, their being highly effective, effective, just we don't uh, honor a TAG grant anymore, it's built into their, their teacher, or I'm sorry, their administrative contract and then um, a percentage for years of experience. And so using that, um, I feel comfortable that this keeps us in alignment with other districts around us. I do know, um, I fear that if we continue down this path, depending on ADM and state funding and everything, that this is going to grow at a rate that I'm not sure that we're going to be able to continue to keep up with. We're really going to have to keep an eye on that and look at that uh, moving forward because it may not uh, be able to be, be a funding formula that we're able to continue to keep up with. Um, and I've spoken to the team in regards to that. Additional contracted employees would be Kathy Adams, Amy Bodie, Nathan Ecker, Brian Holcomb, and uh, Marsha Warland are adjunct teachers wanting to honor their work, years of experience, and the degrees that they have, but they wouldn't fall on that teacher um, salary line, so had to pull them out for consideration as well on this. And then Amber, uh, her increase in pay, she's completed the majority of her work towards her um, certifications through IASB and want to recognize that dedication and what she's learned through that process and certifications that we've asked her to, to obtain. Congratulations. One more. And all of those are figured into the overall <coughs> numbers as well. It, when, we, when we began with the formula, it, it seemed like the right thing to do, but I understand Absolutely. where she's coming from in terms of making sure we don't continue in a snowball type fashion but we also want to make sure that our administrators are well paid and that we are um, competitive with area schools and hopefully everybody's pretty happy with and i do i don't out. want to um i don't want anybody to misunderstand and i don't think the team does i very much appreciate their help and their support um, it's just as I explained to the, te the classroom association as well. Um, teachers in the association get to um, advocate for the teachers group, and I appreciate the board and, uh, and this, this group and that formula advocating for administrators, recognizing administrators and the work that they do. It's not just a uh, 7.45 to 3 o'clock job um, and recognizing that. My concern is for the overall uh, fiscal responsibility of the district that as we move forward we're really going to have to watch and see if that formula is one that we can live with or if we need to come up with some other way to uh, compromise and support uh, those contracted employees. Any questions? I have a couple. How many um, for speech and language pathologists? We have, how many do we have? We have two right okay. now. Um, but uh, our short one person, and we need to, uh, I know Jen's been we working at that, and it's a contract that yeah. Now this is in addition to the, the online yeah. resource that we're using? Correct. And then how many department heads do we actually have? So we have um, Scott Kistler, 
Wendy Bowers, Doug Bowers, Kevin Langley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, those numbers are broken out between the operations and education. Wendy's would not be in those um, overall numbers that I gave to you as hers comes out of a totally separate budget item. Anyone else? Another question. You give us uh, weekly notes and updates which keep us involved in knowing what's going on. Do you receive from your admin team or your head, your department heads, weekly notes? I know that you are in constant conversation with them, but the last, probably the last month, uh, I feel that your plate has become increasingly. <laughs> so so um, just having something for you to reference to uh, or to follow up with. So I'll let my team speak. We try to meet once a week. I think they will share with you. I'm available all the time by phone and they keep me looped. I don't want to step on their toes. I know that Doug and Wendy and Kevin, it's probably a little bit harder to track me down, but would like to think that I respond to phone calls and emails as quickly as I can, but try to have as much of an open door as possible. Team, I don't know if anybody wants to jump in. Yeah, I mean, we also like, we all send weekly reports to our teams, our schools, and she's been on all those. So she kind of knows the main events going on every week, gets all that kind of stuff. But um, I, if I need to communicate anything to her, I just call her. Um, she's always available, or I text, and she calls me back. And I, I've never had any issues with, you know, communication. And um, I. I Jason brings up a really good point. What the department has seen that, and I can start including you, is that the, every Friday afternoon I try to send my week at a glance so that they know more so what my availability is. I think it helps probably more within the administrative office and Amber and Kathy and what they're doing and trying to track me down. But every Friday afternoon, and Scott gets that, the directors get that, um, what my week looks like the next week so that if they have pressing issues, they can kind of balance their calendar with my calendar and know when the door is going to be open. But I would like to think I'm not always readily available, but I'd like to think I'm always right there for the team. Unless I have to talk to you, the better. <laughs> 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 I don't mean that personally. If I, if I can go without getting a hold of her during the week, it's usually a pretty good week. Um, good questions. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, anything else before we vote on this issue? Okay, so it reads that we um, approve the contract employee salary proposal per Mrs. Nance. And I, these we would anticipate with the teacher's contract being the second pay of December. What throws us off the first pay of December is the shortened week right now. And behind the scenes, we are already doing those time cards and doing the transfer between banks for next week's um, payroll. So the retro pay and everything would actually, uh, for Kathy to enter all of that information and for us to make the transfer in time would be the second pay of December when retro pay would catch up on everything. And one more question. Okay, sure. What's the, uh, what's the percentage increase that our admins are received. It's very, I don't know that I figured it by percentage. <coughs> I apologize. I know it's greater than 3%, but because we started there, I don't have a by percent. I apologize. I just did hard numbers. You said it was based on you know, years of experience, but it's just based on the daily of the highest teacher <coughs> multiplied out by so the formula has the highest, so we take a teacher, the highest paid teacher wrong, divide that out by 185 days, and that gives you your daily rate for the administrative formula. We plug that in, then um, if, it's highly, if they're highly effective, they have a $500 added line item. If they're effective, it's a $250 line item. And then for years of experience, it's a percentage, like um, 
for two years of experience, they get half of that, so it's point zero one, I think. I got to look at it. It's been a long time since I've um, seen as they are, as uh, another factor, and that gets us the bottom line number. And then they know teachers, I have still not heard anything in regards to the TAG grant funds coming into the district. Amber hasn't tracked anything. I don't know, Hope, if you've received anything from the association. So the, the other thing, Stephen, and for those new, the teachers will get a one-time um, TAG grant funds from the state. It doesn't impact um, our education fund. It is grant money that comes in and we disperse that out as well. Administrators know that they, there was a time when we gave that to them as well, but rather than do that, it's figured in with their overall contract amount and divvied up over the course of 26 weeks. And what does TAG stand for? Then? Teacher Appreciation Grant Funds. And, and teachers who are needs improvement or ineffective do not receive any money. That is correct. That, that, would be the, that would be the same teacher or administrative contracts as well. If they were um, not highly effective or effective, they would not be eligible for the raises or the tech. Is that rating or evaluation over the teachers comes from the building administrator? Grant? That is correct. <clears throat> and for the uh, administrators, it comes from Jana? Well, for the head principals and directors, for assistant principals, it comes from your principal. <coughs> Clear as mud. And where is our current enrollment numbers? 1505. 1505. Mm -hmm. And that is pre to 12, or is that just kindergarten? Kindergarten to 12. We don't get VC funding for preschool at this point in time. And what had you projected? We had budgeted for fourteen fifty five. <clears throat> Any other questions before we and I appreciate the no, questions. They make questions. good sense. They're good. They make good sense. We just forget because we've been doing it so well. And Everybody knows it, but the school board, we're the elected people, and you know, we have to be held accountable to our taxpayers over the board <coughs> stone. So I got a phone call today <coughs> earlier this afternoon. I got multiple phone calls today. Mm -hmm. Zero. <laughs> I know, nobody was well, Let me give you my your number. Give me your number. It's out there. <laughs> 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 what about the athletic director? I don't see that one. That is a hourly position, correct? No, it's a contracted position. Oh, gotcha. How's come on our site on our contracts? Like all of them, but your Janus is updated. Well, that's or different. not updated. Well, they wouldn't be updated until approval tonight. Like I'm seeing yours all the way up through the 23rd of June, but then when you go to the prince, other admins or anybody else's, it's the one clear back that ends in the 2021. We have that. Has it changed since then? That would because be of the 21 to 23 contract. contract they haven't okay. changed since then. Gotcha. Uh, Any of this making sense, Stephen? Oh, yeah. Okay. It, it was a well thought out plan in the beginning. We spent <laughs> weeks on it. The, the, <coughs> I appreciate the desire and the goal to make it more clear cut because before this formula it had been many many years before there had been a formula and so then it was kind of like eh that sounds good i mean it was more thought out than that obviously but but that made it hard and we ended up with a bigger gap in some areas that needed and so making it more consistent um, was helpful and i do think though that seeing in in actual terms what that could look like forecasted out it isn't necessarily a bad thing to look at reevaluating that formula but yes. it was important to make sure that all of our administrators were being paid higher than our highest paid teacher because we did have before looking at the formula administrators who were making less than teachers 
in actual numbers and definitely in per day numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it too, because when you look at the CBA and you look at the, um, the salary schedule there, that's based on 185 days. And almost no one in this list works 185 days. Their contracted days are more, and so therefore they will have a higher salary. So it is higher than the highest paid teacher because there's a little bit extra bump built in there. Um, but taking the highest paid teacher and multiplying them out by 220 days would be a lot higher than the 72 or whatever that the highest paid is listed. And the other thing when she said it's based on experience, it's based on administrative experience. It doesn't go back to their first year teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, we just start with zero or one. Lori, I don't know. I don't know when you became principal at the high school, but I think you'd only had our vice or assistant principal. But I think you were only been here one year when we introduced that new uh, new program, and um, or at least to get everybody. And you were a one, and I was like, really? I mean, because. So, uh, and then we have others with, Luke, how many years have you been principal? This is... Well, can, but at prior, previous schools as well. Uh, nine years then, I think, okay. eight or nine. Yeah. Right yeah. So, you know, so oh. it does make a okay. difference right there. So you're talking about experience, overall experience, not just at a broad As an administrator, right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how the CPA works as well. <coughs> so if a teacher comes in and they've taught somewhere else for 10 years, then they would not be on the year one or zero level, they'd be on the 10. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Good questions. Okay. Anything else? Oh, um, just to clarify, so back pay will now not be until the 15th, correct? Correct. Because of the short wait. Time, I would have to approve a motion or uh, accept a motion that we approve the contract employee salary proposal per Mrs. Vance. And these will go retroactive to the beginning of their contracted year. Correct. As with the teacher. So moved. Second. You did move that? I did. Okay, I thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny <laughs> and Ben, thank you. All right, all those in favor? First, motion carries 42. Uh, student and stakeholder focus, donations. We have a nice list today. Columbia Elementary received $10 for school supplies in honor of Melissa Belpedio from an anonymous donor. Columbia Elementary received 107 backpacks and boxes of school supplies to students in need in honor of Melissa Belpedio, also anonymous. Columbia Elementary, unknown miscellaneous supplies for students. FC, Polk County Retired Teachers Association, very nice. Riddle Elementary, $10, one school, one book, anonymous donor. Riddle Elementary, $500, coats for students in need. The Builders Association of Central Indiana. <coughs> Real Elementary, $50, miscellaneous donation in memory of Ronnie Young. Rochester Middle School, Mrs. Brower's sixth grade science, unknown. Hidden figure set of 30 books for Mrs. Brower's science class from Cy or Zai Grant Award. RHS Choir, $30. Purpose for the RHS Choir from an anonymous donor. RHS Choir, $20. RHS Choir, another anonymous donor. RHS Drama and Choir, $200 from Hope and Ryan Shally. Thank you, Mrs. Shally. RHS FFA, $339.40. Kosciuszko County Community Foundation in memory of Sonia Easterday. Rochester High School Zebra Cafe, $95. And that is from the RHS staff. RHS Athletics, $53.04. Sportswear from Ohio Pile. Is that, am I saying that right? Ohio Pile. Okay, I don't know, do you know what it is? 
Shouldn't that be That's the good. Ohio Ohio? <laughs> 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 um, just, uh, you know, all of these donations are so worthwhile to all these groups. And I know if, you, you know, they're all valuable. It's things people can use. It's stuff they can use immediately if they have needs, etc. And uh, we're just very grateful for all of that. It's nice to see our choirs and uh, the arts being uh, being recognized. The um, the donations uh, in memory of Melissa Lopetio are uh, amazing. And uh, from um, I didn't know her personally, but from what I've heard, she would have been delighted by all of this. So. Uh, Anyway, the, and the Builders Association of Central Indiana, every school I've worked in, they just come in and say, who needs a coat? What size? And you make a list, and there you go. So we're very grateful for all these donations. I will accept a motion that we accept these donations as read. I'll say it. So moved. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> and uh, a second, please? Thank second. You. Oh. <laughs> now it's competition. Okay. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. And didn't didn't you mention that one of our study sessions that a lot of the backpacks came in during first service? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. It's pretty good. Pretty good. The personnel report at Columbia Elementary, Mary Amesquita, first grade instructional assistant, and she will begin at an hourly rate of $12. 14 and 14. 14 and 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. Just to clarify. <laughs> RMS athletic recommendations. Ryan Martin, sixth grade girls assistant boys basketball. Stipend. Savannah Stevens, RMS cheer coach. Stipend. Abigail McCarter, volunteer swim coach. Lola Bradley, volunteer swim coach. Lindsay Bartz, volunteer swim coach. Billy Newton, volunteer sixth grade boys basketball. Dave McBeck, volunteer RHS wrestling. Abram Fer Ferrara, volunteer RHS wrestling. Sarah Wilson, volunteer RHS wrestling. J.B. Howard, volunteer RHS wrestling. Hayden Prater, volunteer RHS wrestling. Drew Sailors, volunteer RHS wrestling. Noah Swango, volunteer RHS wrestling. Aaron Swango, volunteer RHS wrestling. Eli Swango, volunteer RHS wrestling. Dan Clark, volunteer RHS wrestling. Ethan, uh, Dan Clark, volunteer wrestling. I think I already just said that. Okay. Ethan Hall Holloway, volunteer RHS wrestling. Wade Schaefer, volunteer RHS wrestling. Grayson Garg, volunteer RHS wrestling. J.D. Geller, volunteer RHS wrestling. Jacob Schroeder, volunteer RHS wrestling. Marshall Fishback, volunteer RHS wrestling. Luke Smith, volunteer RHS basketball. Mike Malco, volunteer RHS boys basketball. Corporation <coughs> Maintenance Department. Brenda Denny, building tech, hourly rate, now at $14, correct? Kenneth, Kenny Black, Kenneth J. Blackburn, Maintenance Department Specialist, hourly rate, $20. FMLA, Catherine Lindsay from 10-19-23 to approximately 11-15-23. Resignation, Danielle Martinez, effective December 1st, 2023. Any questions or comments about the personnel report? If not, I'll accept a motion that we approve it as read? So moved. Thank you, Stephen. Second. Thank you, Ethan. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. And now we are up to uh, superintendent business. What you got for us today, Jan? Kevin Reynolds, do you mind starting us with a report from transportation department? Oh, we're good. We've got the fleet ready for winter. We're gearing up for winter. We've got the first load of uh, winter blown fuel in. All buses have got it in by now. Uh, not ready for the cold weather, but Mother Nature's bringing it. <laughs> you know, I don't think they're ready for five o'clock phone calls. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The rest of us are. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm gearing up for it, but, uh, but the fleet's ready. 
the team's ready to tackle the elements, so, so we're all good. <laughs> I believe we have all the winterization done for the corporation and then uh, maintenance staff, we're still looking for two employees, three, sorry, um, one, one building tech for middle school, a building tech for high school and a building tech for Riddle. And we do have one interview tomorrow coming in for middle school building tech. But other than that, everything's in order as far as we can get it. <laughs> Thank you. This month we had our veterans dinner, which was a nice turnout on all locations. It was really, really, really nice. Um, we also had the Kiwanas, and they had an increase to where they almost ran out of some of stuff. And um, I think I've been here like 14 years, and this is probably the first time that I've seen it get that low. So there was a really, really big bunch of orders. They had like 22 orders out of one family, 19 out of another. So it was really nice to see that start to increase again. Uh, we had our first drop from What Chef Wants, which is part of a grant for us to receive local produce. And that's within an Indiana area. So it could be from Ohio, Michigan, Kentucky, and Illinois. Um, beautiful, beautiful produce. We also had a major drop from our commodities they opened um, our section late because there was a bug in a few school districts um, claims, which we were one of them that had the bug. So it put three months hitting all of our locations all at once. Um, I just uh, redid with the state today. Um, they have a form to where we can, when we process our free and reduced forms, it never becomes um, invalid. It's just they want to update it with, you know, as we're changing hands. So what it does is it allows a 10 day back date on any applications. If we don't fill that out, then the day that we would get a free and reduced application in, that would be all the farther we could go with it. We couldn't go back and retroact and give, give the parents their payback. Um, and I signed up for the 24-25 school year to do the DOD Fresh Produce Program because it was such a good turnout with the What Chef Wants. I wanted to see what that was going to do as far as bringing fresh produce in with them with our other commodities. And I have also signed up for the Supply Chain Assistance Funds. We will get a drop around February of 24. The minimum is $5,000, but right now they're estimating us at $45,500. So, um, it's busy at the high school as always. So tonight, before coming here, I was over at the JAG installation that Ashley Burris was doing with her kids. She was doing a really nice job. She had a good turnout from both, um, I think all of her students were there and then a lot of parents were there too, so that was really nice to see. Um, I'm gonna reiterate everything Megan said about the fall play. It was fantastic, it was super fun. I took Alice to it, my fourth grader, and every time there was a blackout, She'd be like, who do you think it was, Mom? That's going to be dead this time. So we had a really fun time with that. It's very fun um, to just go see the talent that our kids have. And it's very obvious on the stage, but it's fun to know, too, that the talent at the sound booth and in the light booth and behind the stage is just as, just as awesome to know that our kids designed those lights and that they're running that soundboard that Oscar and I are not allowed to touch. And we are not allowed to go anywhere near those buttons is really, really special. So it was fantastic. Congratulations to Megan and Brenda and all of the kids. Um, winter sports have started. Uh, girls basketball is 2-0 in the conference, which is exciting. Girls wrestling, which is an emerging sport, had 227 weigh in and wrestle at the high school on Saturday. And I heard it was very exciting. Boys basketball had their scrimmage in the other gym. And then swim for boys and girls has started, as has bowling. We had three students last weekend uh, do perform in the district honor band. And then last week, our civil engineering and heavy equipment pathway had many excavators out at the sheriff's department, which was really cool. The first day, um, the kids were a little bit more intimidated by these machines. They're bigger and they have arms. I don't know what they're called, but they have arms that dig and you could tell the kids are a little bit more intimidated, but 
after doing it, then they become the experts. You know, they get out and they got to tell the next person, oh, do it this way. <laughs> it's really kind of fun to watch. Um, we want to thank Chris Brown, Westside Tractor, New Holland, and of course the Sheriff's Department for their help with that. It's really, really neat. The, on Friday, um, a news station, the PBIS Education, PBS, not PBIS, <laughs> PBS out of the WNIT station from South Bend came and, excuse me, interviewed Joel Lau and Oscar and then a couple students and they're going to do a whole education segment on uh, what happens out there. So they said they would let us know when it's going to air. We'll make sure that we get that footage to all of you. And we had one of our students out there that's in the marketing pathway flying the drone. So the guy who was doing the um, stuff for the news station, he asked if they could share footage, if he could have some of the drone footage, and we thought that was kind of cool too. So um, the Potawatomi, Potawatomi Zoo came and visited the JAG classes, and then anyone interested in going into zoology, we think of the zoo being great for the younger kids, and it is, but our kids loved it. They had a blast, and for those that are looking into that, I think it was very informative for them. We had several students, I think about 14, 15, participate in the Be a Teacher Day in Indy. Our eighth grade is doing a Promote a Business every Friday. Misty Cripe put out there that um, if any businesses wanted promoted in town to send their information and so an eighth grade teacher will wear their t-shirt and promote what that business is all day long. Um, we had Woodlawn employees come in and share with the principals of healthcare classes and then we hosted the Veterans Day program as well which our band and choir performed at and then we had five students that were able to share about a veteran that was close to them or that they wanted to honor and that was very special. What we have coming up, we have a blood drive December 8th, December 11th, the jazz band concert, December 12th, the choir concert, December 18th, the RMS and RHS band concert. We have a semi-formal dance on December 16th. And starting very soon after break, we have the uh, staff 10 days of taste temptation, which is a very big deal. Every uh, department brings in food every day and it's fantastic. <laughs> so that's what we have to look forward to. And pants that don't fit. So. Eat first when the social studies department is up. Yeah, the social, social studies department struggles. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> one year, one of them, this is kind of a funny story. One year, one of them was like, well, nobody eats bananas. So they just brought a couple of bananas. So the office staff, we went to Kroger and bought ice cream and all of the stuff to make banana splits because that person just thought he'd get to take his bananas back home. And he did not. We were bound and determined to make sure that did not happen. Um, we had our book fair last week, so shout out to Mrs. Thomas um, for putting that on. I know it's a lot of work, and we had our family night, and our uh, special area teachers also had a showcase during that, and thank you, Mrs. Schaefer, for all your help uh, with the, the accounting of that. Um, uh, each grade level was able to meet for a half a day last week to continue to adjust their reading curriculum to align with science of reading, so thank you, Mrs. Vance, for allowing that to happen. Coming up, we have our fourth grade concert at the high school on the 14th. Our Bachman, Bachman Optimus Bunch is continuing to collect cereal for the local food pantry. And on December 11th that week, we'll be taking our middle of the year eye ready. We'll share that data, I think, in the March study session. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Brandy? Still not letting out the title of this year's book. Say that again now. You're not letting out the title of this year's book. Oh, absolutely not. Okay. It's top secret. <laughs> Mr. Slater. The past month, um, a lot of the stuff that uh, we've completed are things that I kind of mentioned we had coming up this month, so it might sound a little bit uh, familiar, but we completed our fire safety with the Rochester Fire Department. They came out, set up the the firehouse and uh, we brought we took every kid including uh, daycare kids uh, through that at least not the infants but the, the ones that we're <laughs> able to um, we're continuing with our zebra zones uh, they're a, a great um, event that our kids really look forward to our staff does a great job with it Cindy Gudeman leads that up and she has um, a good amount of uh, staff members that participate and put some extra time in 
making sure that that happens. We also purchased Zebra Zone shirts for all of our students, and um, every kid was able to um, take home that shirt, and uh, they wear them on Zebra Zone days. We had our veterans lunch and uh, our veterans concert. Our veterans lunch, we had 50 plus veterans attend. It was a very well attended uh, event, and the lunch was fantastic. The uh, veterans concert um, was packed. The uh, there weren't many seats, if any, that were even open. We had all six of our first grade um, classes participate in that, and doing that at the high school really brings another level to uh, to that performance, and we've got a lot of positive feedback for that. Um, we took our Zebra Zone Celebration kids uh, as part of our PBIS program to the park and to the fire station uh, as a reward for them. Um, we've completed some CPI training over the past week, and um, upcoming we've got another Zebra Zone coming up. We have kindergarten concert in December. That's our holiday concert, and on December 6th, we will be taking our Zebra Zone winners to Nubiano so that they can learn how to make pizzas. Any questions for Mr. I want to thank everybody for the work that you do, and I hope that everybody has a blessed Thanksgiving. I think that uh, we're all ready for that break and, and ready to go. Mrs. Murphy gave me her notes. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'll try to be the slammer. Okay. <laughs> so since the last meeting, the Halloween dance was a huge success. The haunted locker room was a big hit. I need longer arms. Teachers and students worked hard to make a huge haunted locker room that was designed to go through both locker rooms, and it was awesome, she says. Sixth and seventh grade field trips to Honeywell to see the play The Lightning Thief, and it went very well. Veterans Day lunch at RMS served over 50 veterans over three lunch periods, and it was a great time. The Veterans Day program at the high school went well. Fax and Student Council had a successful canned food and pantry drive benefiting Matthews Market. Uh, middle school math teachers met with Mrs. McLaughlin to work on and discuss curriculum and aligning progress monitoring with iReady and upcoming adoptions. Coming up, student councils adopting three Miracle Tree families and going shopping for them, wrapping gifts, delivering them back to Shepherds. Second iReady test will be given mid-December, and they have started planning for the annual etiquette luncheon, and all board members should have received their invitations. Thank you. She's at the conference, so thank you. Thank you all. Have a great Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you.